Motion by helmet. Welcome to Mance by Mance. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we're here to talk about what goes on in the village, the township. You know, those government entities, those people that make the regulations, laws, and ordinances that affect you out there. That's right, Elgin. And whether you live in the village of Oxford, the village of Leonard, Addison Township, or Oxford Township, these are the people that you went and elected and the committees and the commissions that make decisions that directly affected you, whether you chose to go to that meeting or not. Well, the result can be a taxing situation. Right, and you know, in every uh, meeting, there's usually humor that comes out of it, uh, and we'll try to find that humor, right? Some will laugh, some will cry. Right, <laughs> and there are also rumors, you pointed out, that we will spread around if you're not careful, so make sure that you tune in. That's also known as creative editing. <laughs> it is creative editing, right. <laughs> well, let's talk about three different meetings, if we can do all three. The first one is the Oxford Village Council meeting that occurred on uh, January 9th. The other one is Oxford Township CBA, Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, for the township, January 8th. And the last one we're going to try to reach is the Oxford Village DDA, Downtown Development Authority. 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 Yeah. And shall we go <laughs> forward? Go forward. Charge. Proceed. <laughs> okay. Well, on the Oxford Village Council, of course, you have Sue Basardet, who's the chairperson. Eric Dolan serves on that board, as does Dave Bailey. And uh, Maureen Helmuth and uh, Joel Frost is on that board as well. Other people in attendance were Bob Davis, who is the village attorney. Uh, Drew Benson, who is a intern with the village. And uh, let's see, village manager Joe Madure, who's the new village manager. I understand that uh, Mr. Madure has already gone out and visited many of the vi um, village businesses. So with the arrival of the new manager, is the temporary manager still there? Uh, Evan Teach is now gone. His oh, is he? Yeah, his, oh. uh, his uh, contract has expired. However, he has set in on this particular meeting. He was there. Okay. So anyway, they did the pledge, got the preliminaries pretty much taken care of as they always do. They approved the gen uh, agenda. They had to move a few things around, you know, like you put the P under the, you know, they can move it around. They did that uh, uh, for this particular meeting. They thought it was a Rubik's Cube. Yes, right. <laughs> well, the thing is, once they move it, they can't get it back. I see. <laughs> so it's never going to happen. Anyhow, uh, the audit report was the main uh, concern that they had. And there was a gentleman who was the auditor uh, from the area, and his name was Aaron Stevens. And uh, very informative. He said that there's a number of things, he said that uh, uh, did meet the criteria in terms of uh, being solvent, you know, for the village. He said the general um, account or the, uh, um, the main um, source of income that they have from the general fund uh, looks real good. Matter of fact, it increased by <coughs> roughly $70,000, I think, uh, last year. Okay. So it's uh, a strong indicator of how the village is doing at this point. Uh, he said that there were internal controls that he would recommend in terms of the administrative portion of it. He said you would not want to have more than one person access uh, certain business activities within the uh, administrative office. He said, unfortunately, you're limited to the number of people that are, are serving that office and are employed there, so you really don't have a lot of choice uh, in the way it's being handled, but it needs to be looked at, you know, down the line. So there should be a, a division of labor if there was more labor. <laughs> if there was more labor, there'd be a division, <laughs> right. That's what uh, General Custer thought, I, I think, see. <laughs> <laughs> way back. Uh, but anyhow, that's, that's their kind of dilemma. Uh, another <coughs> thing that he pointed out was that there are 11 <laughs> accounts uh, with, with the bank, uh, various different individual accounts, and they have up to, I believe, six or seven people that are on the list that can access these banking accounts. Mm -hmm. Not a good idea. <laughs> Aww. Aww. And actually, Sue Basardet, uh, the chairperson, she spoke very adamantly that that needs to be changed as quickly as possible. Um, to keep in mind that uh, she said that she went to the bank. So what's the correct operating number? Well, the correct operating number would be like probably the village manager, probably the village council president. Um, there might be one more. Um, you keep adding. 
yeah, but it would be the treasurer probably, you know, the village, that kind of thing. Mm. Uh, but I don't think seven people or six people even, you know. If you look at it from a business standpoint, if you had a business and you had seven people on your bank account, that could be a problem. Yeah. Uh, even a personal account, like your personal account. Let's say you have five people on your bank account. How long would you stand for that? There, they would, there would be a perceptible drift in the accuracy of what the information. <laughs> there probably would be. And anyway, that's what the auditor was trying <coughs> to point out to the village council. And Sue Basarda, as I said, was adamant about the fact that that needs to be changed. And she said that they've attempted to make the change with the bank over a number of years. However, they have not made that change. And she wants to know why it hasn't been changed and why there's such a holdup. Well, the thing there should is, be a better attempt. Right. <laughs> well, what's interesting is that most of the village uh, council members, they kind of had a blasé attitude about it. They said, well, let's bring the bank in here and let's talk to the representative and, and see what we can do you know, about this. You and I both know that if accounts are being accessed by other people, that you would be able to close those accounts immediately and open new accounts so under the, the basic, proper the names, ba right? The basic premise is, is that... Uh, too many people are handling the accounts. Right. Dangerous. And I'm one of them, and I'm Dangerous. not getting cut. <laughs> well, let me put it this way. David, <laughs> David was on that board, and he looked in there and said, gee, there's 600 and some thousand dollars. Wow. I think I'll go to Hawaii. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no, he's a pretty honest guy, but I, there are people I, that would do that, I'm sure. No, but you get too many, too many hands in the pot, and mm -hmm. things drift. Not a good thing. So, anyway... Uh, the total, the overall view that the auditor had was that the village is doing quite well at this point, uh, financially. Uh, so the next point that they talked about in terms of recommendations uh, was to adjust journal entries, uh, bring certain entries, move them to different other areas as appropriate. Um, he did say, you know, segregation of duties would be a good idea. Uh, and a number of other areas, of course, that he, he pointed out as we just discussed. So with that, um, Mr. Dolan said, as far as the general fund is concerned, he said, is it healthy? He said, by all means, he said, it's a healthy fund now. He said, one time it wasn't that way, but he said it's getting that way and getting stronger all the time. What's the measure of healthy? Well, there's a certain percentage that you want to carry. Usually, I, I believe it's at least 20%, 25% of... Uh, you know what your uh, total, expenditure. total expenditures are. Okay. So it's it is looking pretty good, and I know that when I was on the village council, that was an issue that I always wanted to bring up: is that the the general fund was looking rather sad, and they need to you know fix it. Now it's happier. Now it's happier. It's a happy little general fund. <laughs> That's a good thing. So uh, Mr. Bailey said though that uh, the bulk of the audit problems, he said, is it due to uh, change in um, administrative uh, individuals, you know, for the, for the village. And the auditor said, absolutely. He said there were things that were supposed to be filed with the state. He said in, in a timely manner, they were not. He said we had to really hustle. And he did thank the people involved, um, Evan Teach, for example, and uh, also the clerk um, who was part-time, you know, from Madison Township, um, filling in. He said that without those people, we would not have met the obligations of the village. He said, but we did meet them. So with that note, we'll talk more when we come back right, right. after this. Your Marine Corps way of life is to defend the American way of life. Every day, we take a stand for our nation, for each other, for us all. The few, the proud, the Marines. Welcome back to Miss Five Minutes. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we are talking about the village council meeting that they had last week or so. Uh, the next item that came up was the uh, McKenna uh, representation for the water cross connection program that they have. Do you know what that is? A water cross? Water cross connection. That's the village and the township? 
in the village, village more so, township is all, already up to date on what re needs to be done in the township. So what's the cross mean? What it is, is it's to keep contaminants from occurring from a water source. For example, if you have a uh, lawn watering system using the municipal system, yeah. it could very easily pick up contaminants without this check valve or this check system uh, placed in line you know, to the water system. So the state now... You mean like backflow? Yep. The state has now passed a regulation that everyone has to conform with this new um, cross connection program. So what's the degree of compliance at this time? Uh, probably very low. <laughs> but that's going to change. I and that's see. what was pointed out by McKenna and Associates. Is that a DPW kind of a thing? Well, let me say that, yeah. Not, not DP, well, it would be DPW. It probably would be monitoring it somewhat. Um, but this whole process has to be uh, begun by March 2017. Now, actually it was approved. 17? Or I'm sorry, 18. Did I say, yeah, March 18, 2018. But it was actually approved in March 2017 in a meeting that they had to go forward oh. with it because the village council knew that it was going to be coming. But they're still trying to find first gear? <laughs> right. <laughs> they haven't found it, as you can see, for a couple of years here, at least a year. All right. So since it was already approved, uh, just the information was given to the council. The council then agreed that, you know, there's no action really required other than go forward with it. Uh, so that's what they did. They moved forward with it. They received and filed it. Okay, so starting in March 1st, even before that, you folks out there will be getting letters concerning this uh, um, connection thing for the water, and uh, you'll but learn that, more about it. But that means the DPW has to install it. The DPW will install it, more than likely. Okay. Yeah. But it I means they have to acquire a, a whole contract. bunch of these valves, right? It could be a subcontract, but it'd have to be through negotiation with a DPW if that happens. So does that so represent a know. special assessment to the taxpayers? Uh, well, there's a charge. In a, to install this, and I believe it's uh, $30 per installation. So if you need it, you know, then they will install it for $30. Okay, that's, that's not Straight bad. across the board, real simple. That was a simple deal. <clears throat> okay, so um, they approve, they went re regular business, they approved the consent agenda, including uh, the bills for $115,981, and get your pen out, 27 cents. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> oh Can boy. Around. <laughs> Hang around. Okay. Uh, unfinished business uh, discussion uh, <clears> of <throat> goals for the village, village manager. It was pointed out by Sue Basardit that there's a difference between duties and goals. That there's certain things that the village manager is expected to do as part of his job. Goals are things that he can provide to the council, explaining what he's going to do to improve the, the village operation and uh, what's going on around the village. Right? Okay. So that and that could amount to 20, 30 items. It's hard to say. Uh, the new manager, of course, that would be his decision to go forward with that. Pick the top like six. <laughs> pick the top six. What is that? They could have top ten. They could have ten. Pick the top ten. Mm. I don't know. Go above ten, then nothing gets done. <laughs> nothing gets done, right? <coughs> well, this I got a feeling they're going to get some things done. This guy seems to be pretty <coughs> energetic. Uh, the new manager that's coming in, uh, who is Joe uh, Madur. And so we're looking for some good things uh, coming from him. Uh, Mr. Dolan said that the council should uh, not be running the manager's job. He said, stay out of the manager's office. That's his responsibility. He's hired to do it. And I don't expect, he said, anybody should be in there telling him how to do his job. Wow. So that was. That almost sounds pretty, familiar. Yeah, that was powerful. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Well, uh, actually, Dave Bailey, he spoke up and he says, well, I like to go in the office from time to time, but he said, I don't interrupt their business. He said, I just kind of want to know what's going on in there, you know, kind of eye, thing mm -hmm. yeah, eye things up. And he said, I don't stay at a desk or anything, I leave. And he said, well, that shouldn't be a problem, but he said, again, don't instruct the manager how to run his job. Okay, good point. Uh, let me see, what else you got coming? New business. You can do Mike. that at performance review time. <laughs> they could, yeah. Uh, Mike Solwald, the police chief for the village, he was requesting a new vehicle. And this time he wants to get a um, SUV instead of a regular car. He said that uh, 
the vehicle they have, of course, has aged to a point where they need to replace it. He looked at several vehicles. He did discuss uh, the Ford and the uh, Dodge mm -hmm. vehicle and uh, had quite a conversation with the village council. Eric Dolan, he spoke up and he said, I believe, he said, we should not use those vehicles. He said, we go to the Chevy Tahoe. He said, because I'm familiar with Chevy Tahoe. We have it in our police force. He's a police officer, and, um, but not with our village. And he said that they've had very good performance with that vehicle, even though it's $10,000 more than the other vehicles, it's well worth it because the other vehicles that, that were discussed have major, major service issues and it will cost a lot more than $10,000 over the term of the life. So that was well spoken by Mr. Dolan. And when it was all said and all the smoke cleared, they did go tell the um, police chief to go ahead and get bids on the Tahoe and bring it back to the uh, village. Okay? All right. So that took care of that. And that pretty much took care of the village council meeting that they had. And the next one we're going to talk about is the Oxford Township Zoning Board of Appeals. ZBA. ZBA. Okay, and they went through the preliminaries. The people serving on that board were uh, Kelly Rosner Myers. Uh, Walters was absent, Commissioner Walters. Uh, March Payne serves on the board. Uh, James Butler and Corey Bailey serve on the board. Now, <clears throat> they approved the minutes immediately for October 9th and also December 11th. No problems there. Uh, there were public comments, and Joe Ferrari stood up uh, representing the township. Of course, he's a treasurer for the township of Oxford. And he had a disagreement in the way um, minute changes could be made and the way they were recommended, and there was quite a con controversy over that, if you recall, in the past, where they'd want to change one word or change two lines mm -hmm. or uh, so forth. And it has to be done through a resolution at that point. But anyway, Joe um, made... Uh, this board aware that they don't have to go through that extent um, and using up that kind of time to discuss one or two items and, and what should be quoted and what should have periods on it and, and semicolons. So anyway, uh, his point was pretty well um, covered, but uh, Callie Rossner said, well, everything has uh, been handled already and we don't see anything that needs to be addressed here. So she kind of set him on the side here. Ooh. that point, public comments. You don't do that with Joe. <laughs> oh, you'll find out. Uh, so they had elections right after that for officers uh, for the Zoning Board of Appeals. And what happened here, and I'll make a list, but chairperson now, instead of Kelly, will be James Butler. Oh, okay. And vice chair will be Corey Bailey. And then secretary will be Marge Payne. Oh. So that's the change. So you're going to change, see a change with the Zoning Board of Appeals, folks. New guys in town. Right. The first issue that came up was the uh, number one uh, Zoning Board of Appeal that, that came up. Uh, remember we talked about this guy that wanted to build this uh, garage, which was something like 1,600 square feet uh, oh, yeah. in the last yeah. uh, time we talked about the Zoning Board of Appeals? Well, this came before the board again because it was tabled back then for more information. And there was quite a discussion, of course, between this board and this individual. Um, who lives on Ludwig Road and east on the east side, south of Ramsgate Lane. And the question was, is, is it a hardship that this guy needs to have this large of a building? And the answer to that was, no, it's not a hardship. Would it interfere with the looks of the community by doing this? The answer was yes. And there's a number of other qualifications that it looked at too. And when it was all said and done, Carlisle Wartman, who's their consultant, he said that a 558 square foot building would be acceptable to, there, but nothing larger. So needless to say, it was not agreed upon and it was denied. Denied. Uh, yep, with a letter from Judy Beaver uh, objecting to it as well. So it was denied by the board. That letter being a, a neighbor? Mm -hmm. Neighbor. Okay. Coming up next, we'll talk more. Hi, it's Connie from Connie's Kitchen. I just wanted to remind you to watch us on OCTV and um, UVerse and um, okay, car, car. this is Connie from Connie's Kitchen at Tree Top Lodge uh, reminding you to watch my program on OCTV and on Charter and on car, car, car. Hi, it's Connie from Connie's Kitchen here at Tree Top Lodge reminding you to watch us on OCTV and YouTube and Charter and Alright, cut.
I think you forgot your lines, Connie. You think I? Well, I don't have lines. Should have called lines. L lines. There we go. Lines. Lines. Okay. Three, two, one. Me. Here we go. Three, two. Join me here at Treetop Lodge. This is Connie from Connie's Kitchen, reminding you, you that you that you can watch us on OCTV and YouTube, Charter Channel 199, Uverse Channel 99. Can you imagine if we had to go through this every time? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh. Okay, see ya. This is Connie from Connie's Kitchen here at Treetop Lodge, and I want to remind you to join me here at the lodge for Connie's Kitchen on OCTV, on YouTube, on Charter Channel 199, on Uverse Channel 99, and, and enjoy the show. Welcome back to Minutes by Minutes. We are talking about the Township Zoning Board of Appeals. And the second, second zoning board uh, meeting that they had or individual that came up was James uh, Brzezinski. And uh, let me see, he lives in a R1 zoned area, single family residential, uh, north side of West Drainer Road between Glaspie and Olive Street. That's Olive Street. Um, it's an accessories building and structures concerned. But actually the real issue here was the uh, deed, uh, property line deed. Apparently what happened here is that um, when the settlers came in. No oh dear. <laughs> actually in 1943, uh, they marked off the, the property, didn't they? Uh, evaluation of where the stakes should be. They being the surveyors? Being the surveyors. And the county agreed went ahead with it and their, their lot line was off 2.7 feet <laughs> they discovered in their all favor these years. no against their favor oh against their favor and what's interesting is this guy's neighbors agree that the property isn't theirs it belongs to the guy that's saying he wants that property line reevaluated and put on the deed ah so uh it was consulted with carlisle wartman who said yes change it by all means now is the time to do it <laughs> so they did they approved it so that took care of this gentleman's issue. Uh, North Baldwin Road, Raymond uh, Weir the uh, third was the third one that came up. It's R R3 single family zoned, located east side Baldwin Road, south of Hummer Lake Road, and north of Granger Road. Now you know exactly where that's at, right? More or less. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Joe Ferrari spoke for this and on behalf of the uh, owner, and this is a piece of property. Actually, there's several pieces of property there that in order to settle a court issue that has been going on for years and years and years, um, property was sold to these individuals to extend their property line and make it more acceptable and legal mm -hmm. on their side. The problem is that the property, without changing and agreeing to this by the Zoning Board of Appeals to change the lot line, would not allow these people to access the lake. So what it does is it approves lake access for each of these pieces of property. Uh, Otherwise, what would happen is they could be de denied access to the lake which and they are right off the lake. Which affects the sale saleability of the property. Absolutely. And the value of the property is no sure. question. So anyway, so after a, a pretty lengthy discussion, there's two pieces of property involved. Joe Ferrari did an excellent job of representation uh, for these folks and it was approved good okay so that takes care of the zoning board of appeals now we're going to talk about the oxford village dda board pete schultz is the uh, chairperson sue Bas uh, basardet serves on that board rod charles nicole ellsworth dorothy johnston nancy rosenstratter and susan sure and wow elgin nichols so they did, went through all the preliminaries on this and of course they uh, uh, went through the consent agenda, agreed to the consent agenda, including minutes and so forth, including the bills at the amount of $13,442 and, get your pen out, 59 cents. 59 cents. <laughs> it is, okay. And so that was all uh, run through. They've been operating in the black now for quite a while. Oh yes, yeah, they're, they're doing quite well with it. <laughs> uh, they have roughly, and we want to talk about that, around $300,000 sitting in their general fund now. They used to have a Zippo a few years ago. <laughs> a couple of IOUs. <laughs> yes, and they're very solid in terms of the way it looks financially. All right. So very solvent at this point. Looks good. Uh, now their major concern, of course, is the streetscape and what's going to happen in year 2020. You know, an M 
uh, 24. Is that penciled in? It is penciled in. <laughs> for the DDA, it is penciled in. And the thing is, they want to accumulate funds to be able to handle this. The streetscape is going to cost roughly 400000 and they will have the $400,000 in their account when it's time to do this. Also, in addition, they're looking for marketing and, uh, um, what, what do you want to say? Marketing. Advertising. Marketing and advertising. Branding. Branding. Uh, marketing and advertising for downtown. So when this thing does come through, there's going to be various uh, programs that are going to be available for you folks that own businesses down there to, to generate activity for your businesses and make sure that you know we don't have any issues as this thing is developed. So, and right now it looks like we're going to have roughly about thirty thousand in there for that purpose, and there may be more, you know, as we go along. And the clock is ticking. Right, and there was a question that Super started had as we went along here in terms of budgeting because we did talk about budgets, and uh, Mr. Pape, who is the uh, executive director, Glenn Pape, he provided the uh, preliminary budget plan. And uh, there were a couple of things that need to be moved around, uh, certain things that need to be increased in terms of uh, dollar amounts. And uh, Subasara was adamant in the fact that uh, these, what you call peg holes, <laughs> account numbers, oh. that they need to have those funds put in exact location so that she can follow uh, where it's going to be, for example, for the uh, streetscape. And in order to generate more funding for the streetscape, and also for the advertising funds and so forth, she suggested that they put the money into uh, the Oakland County banking system, oh. which is a special account that you can get more interest on. Yeah. So, so good I've point. Heard. So, I've heard. so all this being said, and there's a lot more said, and you folks can gain the information by going to occtv.org and checking it out because all the meetings are on that uh, particular site. Just click on programs. Yep, that's all you got to do. And so that was all agreed upon. It was all approved. So that's what's going to happen. Uh, it looks pretty good so far. There's one individual they did talk trash. <gasps> at this point, yes, trash. <laughs> Remember, they have an ongoing problem with trash. And it's with receptacles and so forth. And GFL, who's a Canadian company, or the pickup service, and they've had some issues with GFL. And this was all pointed out during this meeting. And so uh, the... the point of contention is that it's not tolerated, that they need to have a good service from this company. Uh, this is an issue that's been going on for quite a while. It has. Uh, one of the problems that they have is um, recycle bins. They're not large enough. And a gentleman from town... For businesses or for... For the businesses. Okay. Now, here's the point. There's a lady out there that went on to Facebook, said that you folks can bring all your recyclables and use these bins. That's not true. You can't use these bins for tr uh, trash either. Did you know that the, uh, these businesses downtown, they pay for these trash bins and, and they also pay uh, you know, for the recycle bins? And a gentleman uh, from Hometown Brewery spoke, and John Powers, and he said the problem is with bins too is they're too small. He said his business and other businesses really want to use recycling. But he said, there's no room. He said, other people are using these bins, too, that aren't part of the downtown DDA. Just drop by. And just drop by. Up. He said, there was a um, cabinet that was there that was at least 12 feet long metal. He said, that's the only thing that would fit in the recycle bin. <laughs> he said, you couldn't get anything else in there. He said, but it's very often you find you know, old uh, chairs, old couches, uh, old kitchen cabinets, all those kind of things. It's and you folks turning into a dump. cannot use those for that purpose. That sounds more like a yeah. dump. Right. So you folks are taking advantage of these businesses that are paying for this uh, downtown. You want to watch out now because it's been, the service has been turned over to the police department who is watching these particular things going on. You will be ticketed. So also they're going to pass, I understand, stronger ordinances in the village in order to accommodate and make sure that downtown looks nice, that people come into town. They love the village because of the way it looks and the way they're treated. Get your own recycle bin. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do we have coming up? Not much. <laughs> We've got one meeting on 2-5 at 7 o'clock, the village of Oxford ZBA. And as always, 
sometimes they don't meet. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So call them and check them. <laughs> this is Minutes by Minutes. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kinney. Catch you next time right here. See you then.